you're just taking tension off a little spring in there for the uh, for the shim that bypasses the low speed compression. But it's you know so through time I seem to add a little bit more here and there to kind of keep the same feel. But it doesn't take much to feel this thing. Once you have it in its range, if if you want it to rear in a little bit firmer, you you're only going to want to turn it like that much, like that much. And oftentimes what I'll do is I'll turn it maybe that much and say whoa that was a little bit too much i like the way it feels but just a little less of that i do like it but not that much and then i crack it back down just a hair right now i currently have this setting at about one turn um and it might be a little bit less than one turn i think one turn was somewhere right about here so it might be a little less than one turn but in my notes i have it written down as one turn and i did them notes quite a, um about a year or a year and a half ago um but yeah, you you got to be real careful with that. Just don't go yanking it and, and spinning it. And when you make the adjustments to the high speed compression, it does not affect this low speed compression. You will see that flat head in there spin with it as you spin it. But don't worry, it's still in the same clicker setting. It spins with this whole assembly here. It's okay. So um, just it 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 only takes a little bit. If you don't know where to start on this bike, just set it at one turn. I mean, it's just like the clickers. You turn it all the way in, lightly seat it. It doesn't click. This one don't click. It just you just count the turns. So set it at one turn. Mark it with like a like a sharpie, like I've done right here or something like that, and turn it completely out. Just one turn and start there. If the rear end feels um, too stiff, and, uh, and mainly what usually what I tell people is. The best way when I have to run this through to someone really quick, I just want to get it into their head real fast so they have an idea what's going on. I tell them, this is for the small stuff on the track, the low speed compression, the little bumps, and this is for the big hits, the high speed for the big hits. That's just that's really the quickest way to explain it to someone to kind of give them a crash course. But yeah, it it it, it kind of does hold true on the on the big hits if you need the if you need that back end just to be stiffer and just to stay just to stay up a little bit more let's say it's diving let's say it's sinking too low on the faces of the jumps the rear end it's it, like the front end staying up but the back end on the face you can feel it and it's making you jump front and high add some high speed again it only takes a little bit just just turn it a little bit and see if that wasn't enough you can always do a little bit more but don't go crazy with it because it's very sensitive once it's in its range sure once you're outside the range you can turn it a half a turn and not feel anything. But once you get it in that range, it's probably your whole tuning range that you can actually feel it. It's probably only about maybe a half a turn, maybe, once you're in the range. And that thing has a, theoretically, it's supposed to have a tuning range of zero to three turns. But I'm telling you, it's only, once you get it in that area, it's like a half a turn. And then, of course, if the back end is, is feels like it's overpowering the front, on the faces of the jumps, it feels like the front end's compressing, but the back end is is staying up and strong. Then you know you can always just turn the high speed compression out in the rear to get that balance you're looking for. Um, I use the oil level and the high speed compression on the rear to uh, above everything else to balance out the bike, and then from there I can use them too to either bring up the stiffness or lower the overall bottoming resistance not stiffness bottoming resistance so i use them too to control the bottoming resistance but you have to keep them balanced so if if overall your bottom if you're looking for more bottoming resistance out of the rear and it's currently balanced they're both kind of bottoming about the same time um you're going to have to add more oil in the forks as you add high speed compression to keep the balance the same and then for the fork oil height, um, stock in 06, the, um, the fork oil height was supposed to be 340 cc's. And um, I think somewhere around 2011 or so with the new ones, the standard level was supposed to be like 350 if I remember correctly. But the tuning range, the manual says you can go as low as 300 cc's and as high as 380 cc's. Interesting enough, I do find stock these bikes typically come low like sometimes even only 300 cc's even though the manual says the standard level is 340 or whatever I, I i pull them apart brand new and find 300 in each i don't know if they're trying to save money in oil or what but that's okay i'd rather be higher than lower when i'm tuning because i it's easy to add oil in these things and, and fork fluid in the front 
and it's harder to take it out because you have to take the forks off the bike take the lids off and dump it and I'll show you how I add it at the track for quick adjustment so that I can tune it in the, for the field that I'm looking for what I do is I pick up some of these syringes right here uh, this small one right here works I mean it's kind of worn off the label or something like this and then you bring the suspension fluid that you're currently using to the track if your bike is stock and has stock fluid you're going to want to get the Yamaha S1 fork oil that's what you're going to want to mix it with if your bike has had any service and if you change the fluids and you're going to want to know what type of fluids in it and you use that to keep you know so you don't mix fluids but anyway let's say I'm looking to add um, five cc's in each fork leg let's say currently there I have them set at 320 cc's but I'm hitting the bottom just I'm hitting the bottom I'm bottoming out a little bit too much and it's on the big hits or it's getting too low in the stroke on the big hits and I want to stiffen up the front I want to, you know, stiffen up the uh, the bottom resistance of the front. Well, I, I like to do five cc's at a time. So what I'll do is I'll put five cc's in this syringe, and then you uh, remove the bleeder screw. I have these quick bleeders right here, these blue ones, but stock they just have a flat head right right in here. You remove the bleeder screw on both forks. You set the bike on the ground, compress the front end, hold the front brake, compress the front end just a little bit, and then have someone um, just slowly with the bleeder let me see you have someone as you slowly add that fluid in the bleed hole as you pick the fork the front end back up it'll suck that fluid right in it'll suck it right in and that's how I add the fluid track side so I can make changes I do five cc's at a time milliliters whatever it's all the same stuff um, I, I do five at a time and you'll feel it. it. You do five in each leg. You always keep it even. So you add five cc's here, five cc's there. And go. Um, then you put the bike back on the stand, put the bleeder screws back in, and uh, go out and take it for a ride. The reason I say put it back on the stand is so you at least have neutral pressure in here. You don't, you know, it's, it's, it's you don't want positive, whatever the case is. And um, and if you are going to do it on the ground, like I, I mentioned in my previous video, do it with no one sitting on the bike. but Because it will heat up when you do your first couple laps around the track, and it will expand to at least atmosphere pressure, and that's fine. I just don't like going above atmosphere pressure. But anyway, um, so you add five cc's at a time, take it around the track, and see. And if you, once you, once you receive, once you get to the point that you feel that that's good, then you stop there. And... Um, like let's say you just rebuilt these forks and you had 320 cc's put in into the outer chamber of the fork but they're a little bit too soft so you go to the track and you add five cc's in it on each fork it felt good but you want a little more you add five more cc's and that now that was perfect keep that write that down on a note because now you know you originally had 320 but now you just added 10 more each on each leg so that's 330 so next time you go to service your forks all you got to do is just add 330 in it and and you're good uh, by the way I'm currently running 332 but I weigh 150 pounds um, you know just in street clothes I'm currently running 332 on each fork leg and that that's working for me on this bike so if you need more bottoming resistance from the rear you just add a little bit of height zoom in you got your again zoom in like in video one two that you have your spring rates correct and um, and you have your rebound set right and your low speed set the best you can um, just you work with the high speed here and on the forks if you need more bottoming resistance and just a general overall firmer feel as you uh, on the bigger hits you just add more oil in the outer chamber like I just mentioned with the syringes up top um, if you need it both then you have to do them both together. Balance is important. So first thing you want to do is get it balanced. So if the back end seems to be stronger than the front, then um, add some oil in the forks in the front first and get it balanced. Or if the front end seems to be stronger than the back, then add more high speed in the rear and get it balanced. And then go from there. See, Then see if you just want more overall from both of them. Or maybe you should have went less on both of them. But hopefully not less. Hopefully more because less means you have to take the forks off, flip them upside down. That's a pain in the butt. And another thing to consider too is let's say your uh, your rider sag on the rear. Your rear end is riding a little bit too low. You just kind of notice this. Maybe you, you had it all dialed in, 
but just through time the spring got a little bit softer or whatever you started riding a little too low for your liking so you chose to lift it up a little bit and uh and decrease your rider sag um sometimes when you do that all of a sudden you get the height that you want but now the back end's feeling a little bit too stiff that's where the high speed compression will come into play high speed compression correlates with the rider sag so if you got the riders if you lower the rider sag and it becomes too soft you can add high speed to to combat that or if you raise it up and it becomes too stiff you can lower the high speed compression to kind of cure that um, on the forks it's, it's pretty much the same thing as you raise the forks I know it sounds weird but as you raise the forks to lower the front end the forks are gonna you're, you're you know anytime you lower your front end by raising the forks you're essentially uh, uh, taking the pitch of the bike like I mentioned in the vi last video and you're sending it more forward which steepens the head angle, he head angle of the forks but it also puts more weight on the front end and more weight will cause um, the forks to feel a little bit softer so what you might have to do is, is if you decide that you want it to lower your front end is you might have to add more oil in the forks outer chamber through the bleeder here to uh, to keep the firmness on the big hits that you're looking for and the opposite is true as well as, as you lower the as you lower the forks to raise your front end now you're going to be raking out your front end a little bit more as you set your pitch back a little bit more by raising the front end and that actually does take weight off the front end which will make the forks feel a little bit firmer because they're not having to work as hard because there's it, essentially they, they feel like there's less weight on them so they don't want to work as hard so you might have to take some oil out of the forks to retain the same uh, feel that you previously had yeah all this stuff like I said in the previous video it's, it's like an equalizer you know if you if you start adding a bunch of bass over here and then you're gonna have to add some treble over here or if you take the bass away over here, you might have to take the treble over there to, to keep the sound. It's, it's, it, that's how suspension stuff is. I'm, I'm trying the best I can to kind of put this all together for you. But in the end, you're definitely going to have to get out there and, and turn your own wrenches and uh, experiment for yourself. And I think, you'll see, I think you'll see what I'm talking about in a lot of this stuff, how they relate to each other. <clears throat> oh, wow, it's on my mind. Let me mention, too. If you change your rear sprocket, to a different size sprocket that's also going to affect your suspension um, let's say you go to a smaller sprocket and you use the same length of chain it's going to move your rear axle adjustment further back and if you go to a bigger sprocket let's say you go from a 50 stock to a 51 and you use the same lengths it's going to move it for further forward that does also affect your suspension and the way it feels as you move it forward your suspension is going to feel stiffer because now the leverage point from here to here is, is has the wheel has less leverage on the pivot point so it's gonna make it feel a little bit stiffer and as you move it out it might make it feel a little bit softer now the interesting thing is as you move it out you actually gain overall suspension travel because it's traveling from that pivot point so as you move it out you'll gain more, you'll gain more travel and as you bring it your rear wheel forward you'll have less overall travel. But that's something to consider if you're out there changing sprockets. If you have your bike all dialed in and you swap a rear sprocket to a different size, you might have to revisit your suspension settings again. While I had these out, these are your suspension fluid stock. Uh, stock the bike comes with KYB, KC2. You can get that from Rocky Mountain or wherever. And the Yamaha Lube S1. I don't see S1 written on it right here. Oh, there it is. S1. You need the S1. That, that's for your forks. Now, I, I have a little magic mix that I use in the forks, but I'll get to that later on. But for now, that's what you use in the forks. That's what you use in the shock. I mean, you can use other stuff, but if you want, if, 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 if you want to just reuse the stock stuff, you can't go wrong with the stock stuff, and that's what they use in it. So, a quick recap in this video. Um, your rebound dampening also does low speed compression at the same time. So as you add or lower, add or remove uh, rebound dampening, both front and rear, you will also be adding or removing low speed compression. And that's used, your low speed compression, I mean your rebound dampening is mainly used to control the way the bike feels, how well you like it to kind of stick to the ground, 
but going to adding too much rebound dampening will make it where it feels funny on jumps of the air on the air and the suspension can pack and having too little the bike will just feel kind of loose and out of control in your hands and and, and it's hard to control the bike and then your low speed compression is more for the feel how the bike feels also removing unnecessary suspension travel and then your high speed compression right here the 17 millimeter and your fork oil height the outer chamber of the fork oil um the height of that or the volume of that i should say um that will control mainly how your bottoming resistance and how the bike how firm the bike is on the bigger hits that's what that's going to control um another thing i should add though is um as you add the oil even though most most literature that you read on this will say it affects the last one third of the suspension travel as you add oil it actually does add more than it, it doesn't affect more than that it's just it's on a scale so you're not really going to notice it at the top end I do this from now you're not going to notice it at the top end of the stroke so much but by mid stroke you're going to start feeling it so if you add in more oil you're going to start feeling it by mid stroke and and then it really ramps up down here at the bottom but that's that's where you're going to control your uh, the overall stiffness as far as the bottoming control it's going to be with the high speed compression on the rear shock and the fork oil heights on the front and if you change the rear rider sag, that will affect um, your overall stiffness on the rear end. So you might have to change the high speed compression a little bit uh, to compensate for that. And if you change the fork, fork, uh, fork uh, heights for any reason on the front end, that, that might affect the bottom resistance as well, the overall bottom resistance. And you might have to uh, add some more oil or take some oil out of the inner chamber on the forks. Well, I think that's it for this video. Um, I appreciate you guys sticking with me through it. I know sometimes I say the wrong thing. Um, like, I'll say it's too big and then it's too small and I have it backwards. But uh, if you're smart enough, you'll hopefully you'll be able to dig through my stupidity on it. But I appreciate you guys sitting through uh, with me on this. Um, if you like this type of stuff, go ahead and click like and subscribe. Because I'm, I'm going to just keep pushing these videos through. Uh, next week, I'm actually going to be rebuilding a YZ 250 motor it needs a new crank and a few other things so I'm gonna have that video post up next week and rip that thing open and she's a version too she's never been open before so that's gonna be interesting these motors are really tight when they've never been opened before and there should be one more video on this suspension series coming up where I'm gonna do the best I can to kind of tie it all in together um, at this point I've kind of covered what everything how everything affects each part of the bike but I'm, uh, in the last video, I'm going to try to just kind of run through what I do when I first get a bike in my hands and I want to get it set up to, you know, where I start from start to finish. And so maybe you can, for the people that haven't done this before, you can just hopefully just follow them steps and it'll get you right through it. And I'm going to try to tie it all in together for you. But, man, I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, go ahead. Uh, cl um, click like and subscribe and put some comments in the comment section i definitely read them and i try to respond to them and uh have a good evening guys i'll catch you next time